Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vol. And in this video, we're gonna have a beginner's look at the subdivision surface modifier, typically referred to as sub D. I'm gonna have a go at explaining what this actually is and what it does, how it functions, and methods of controlling it to make more organic or smooth looking hard surface objects. As well as the explanation of how sub D works, we will go through and have a look how to make various things with that, including a hollow fin. If you do want to just look for that, you already know how to use sub D. Do you use the chapters or it's got where that is in the description and you can just jump forward to that. So I'm gonna start by modifying this cube just to better show you what you're looking at. So I'm just gonna delete these two vertices and that will give us these two faces that we can control and talk about in terms of sub D. Now, sub D is a really useful tool. I wanna to be clear, it is less vital than it used to be. Sub D used to be the thing that everyone went to and used for pretty much anything that was gonna be a rounded object, and that isn't really a requirement now. There are a lot more things that you can do uh, to control things, but it is quite a nice place to start. So, let's talk about what it's gonna do. So the subdivision surface lives in the modifier tab, and if I have a look at this object, or go back out into object mode, we'll talk through what this is gonna do do firstly without having done it if I just bring in the annotation pencil what you'll see is that we've got a relatively hard edge here which I'm just highlighting what the subdivision surface is going to do is it's going to essentially relax the vertices on this edge so it's going to move those into a point basically somewhere around here for each vertex and that's going to make this have a slightly more curved shape but to allow that curve shape, this is gonna subdivide each face here, well, in fact, actually each edge once if we use one subdivision surface modifier. So let's do that now and have a look at how that looks. Before I do that, I'm just gonna modify some edges. Don't worry about this. I'm going to talk through this later, but I'm just gonna make it so it's easier to demonstrate what subdivision surface is doing. So if I click subdivision surface, you can see it's done exactly what I've said. It has relaxed this edge and brought it back, which was the already existing edge. And then it's divided the faces by one because we've got one level of subdivision surface. So now if we change this up, because we can change the levels of subdivision surface, what this will do is it's gonna help make this rounder by essentially subdividing everything again. So we're gonna get a subdivision there, 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 and here, so again, subdividing each face by one. So if I do that, we can see that it's made it smoother. And essentially you can keep doing that as much as you want to make it as smooth as you want. But this is going to create a lot of geometry, but it is a very nice quick way of smoothing out these shapes. Now this makes for a really nice and quick way of creating rounded objects. It's not the only way, but it is very fast. What we do need to be able to do is control this because while this is great, we might not want it to be this rounded. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I'm just gonna delete that and let's bring in a new cube. We've got our cube and if I don't change this in any way and bring in this subdivision surface, Okay, you'll see essentially it's gonna make it into something that's closer to a sphere because every one of these surfaces is getting more relaxed in a way and we can again bring that up. It's quite a nice way of making a sphere that's got perfect quads. I'll come on to why quads are important later. Now, if I just undo this or at least make it so that we don't see it, so we've got the cube back here, we can control this. What I can do is I can put things in like extra edges and that will control how much the subdivision surface can have an effect. Typically, these are referred to as supporting loops. I actually prefer to think of it as like confining or limiting loops. It's gonna limit how far the subdivision surface is gonna have an effect, but supporting loops is what these are typically called. So if I press Control and R to bring in an edge loop and put this close to this edge, and I'm gonna bring another one here and bring it close to this edge and then turn the subdivision surface back on, you can see this has controlled this edge a lot more. So it's not having such a big effect. Now what I'm gonna do is now do this live to this one. So I'm gonna click here. And as I move it up, it controls how far this is having an effect. Now, when we do this, this doesn't necessarily look great until I start bringing up the subdivision surface levels. But you can see here, this is allowing us to have a lot of control over exactly 
what our cube looks like. And if I do the same here, we can have this nice rounded cube. And now if I take one of those edge loops, I'm just gonna get rid of that one, it's not really necessary. So for example here, and I move it, and select this one and move it, I can control how rounded that is and it's relatively easy and quick for me to sort out. Now that's one of the methods of controlling a subdivision surface is that we can use these supporting or confining loops. I'm just gonna bring that back there and bring that back here. Now there is another way of controlling these as well. So if I just bring in a new cube, let's make that a bit bigger. The other way we can control this is by creasing an edge. If I go into edge mode and select an edge there, we've got an option here called crease. And essentially that will limit a subdivision surface. For example, if I put this all the way up to one, it will mean that that edge is gonna remain sharp or at least creased, hence the name. And that's gonna keep things relatively controlled. So if I just bring all of those up to one, you can see that it gets colored red. And if I go back and add a subdivision surface, you can see all of these other edges have been subdivided, but this one at the top remains relatively rigid. And if I go into edge mode, what I can do, and you can see how this is having an effect, is I can change this crease here, and you can see how gradually it's having an effect. Again, I could do the same thing over here, go all the way to one, or I could have it less than one, so it's got less of an effect. And again, if I up my levels of subdivision, that remains having an effect on this. And again, we can control it that way by changing the amount that it is creased, but has a very different effect to what we've got over here. So if I just A for all of these edges, bring them down to zero, and then start moving that back up again, you can see what's happening here and how it's controlling the amount that this is rounded. If I put the subdivision surface modifier up a lot, okay, we can see what that's doing. So another way of controlling how much we've got this subdivision surface having an effect. Now, I do just want to point out a really important difference between the two. Firstly, you can see they look slightly different, but there is a very important difference if we apply these. So if I apply that and apply that and have a look at both in edge mode, you can see this, this cube where we had our supporting edge loops, by putting the edge loops towards the corner, you can see that we bunch up the geometry here. And that in some instances is fine and not a problem. In fact, sometimes it's what you're gonna want. Whereas using a crease keeps the created subdivisions equally spaced, which can be really important if you want to do something like sculpt on this and you want everything to be the same size or you want to create something like trim where you want everything to be relatively equally spaced from the edge. For example, you want five faces from the edge to be the same in every surface. Whereas here, five that way, okay, off this edge is gonna be different to five off this edge. So now there is something that we need to know about sub D that's very important. And I'm just gonna demonstrate that by bringing this now, sub D is great, but it has its limitations. There are also times where we might want to use something else, but one of the biggest limitations is that it works off of quads. Now, there are times where you can use other shapes with it, but generally you want to have quads. So for example, if I select this face, this is a quad. And what makes it a quad is that it is made up of four, hence quad, so four vertices and then four edges. If you've got a face that isn't a quad, for example, the end of this cylinder has more than four, we would call this an n-gon. And sub D does not like n-gons. So if I go and add in the subdivision surface here, you can see immediately the problems that this has caused. And even if I try to control this with control and R, putting in one of these supporting edge loops and bring that up, we still have problems. But in some instances, it's relatively easy to solve. For example, in this one, the problem point is actually the edge itself. So if I go to face mode, select this face and select I to inset, you'll notice that what's happened here is while I've still got this end gone, the edges are being confined by the quads. If I go to face, you can see that this is a quad. So it's reducing that problem meaning that we can still use sub D on this shape. We've just got to be careful with the quads. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of why sub D is fairly useful. Okay, it is very, very good for making streamlined objects, 
things like sci-fi vehicles, uh, even things like aircraft. It's also very useful for making organic looking hard surface models. Now that seems like a bit of a, a paradox there, hard surface but also organic. But we'll have a look at what we mean by those. So first thing we'll do is just bring in a cube. I'm gonna have a look at this in terms of making something that might be like an aircraft. So let's quickly just make an engine. So I'm gonna press S and Y to scale that on the Y axis and straight away add in this sub D modifier put that up and I'm going to make sure that I can see this so I'm going to go into edit mode and let's put some controlling geometry on this so control and R I'm going to bring that forward here and actually I might leave that where that is on the back we'll sort of have a look at this we're just going to do this really quickly so I'm just going to go to face mode here I'm going to press I to inset it and then let's press E to extrude that in and very quickly you can see that we've got something that's looking like the basis of an engine I could do the same thing on this face notice that we haven't got the supporting geometry here so it's gonna sort of go in and then E to sort of make the end of that and I could even go to vertex mode here and let's shrink those down so we've got something a little bit more interesting let's control R there so that we can scale that up and we've got something that looks a little bit more like an engine now again, we want to sort of have a look at the connection point. So I could put a loop cut here. Let's bevel that and bring it out. And then if I just take this face and extrude this up, we've got that connection point there where this might connect to the plane itself. We could uh, G and Y to move that backwards. And if we press Shift and E, this is an alternative. If I go to here, we've got our mean crease. If I press Shift and E, that effectively does that for us. And I can bring that up there to where it would join into our aircraft. So a really quick way of making something like an aircraft engine. Let's have a look at something else. So I'm gonna bring in a cube, move that up. Let's make this a bit bigger. So let's scale this, so S, and I want to scale it on everything but the x-axis. So I'm going to press shift and x so it scales on everything but the x-axis. Let's make something like that. S and Z, we're going to make that a bit bigger this way. And let's make this hollow fin that I mentioned we're going to make. So let's go into edge mode and control and R. Let's put in three edges. Escape to have that. And then we're going to control and B to bevel them slightly. So we've got slight gaps between our fins. I think actually I'm going to scale that on the y-axis to make this a little bit smaller. And then let's get our fins. So face, I'm going to select that, 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 and that. And we're just going to extrude those out. Now you'll notice this is really important. I added those bits in so we've got the quads. Now that's G and Y. Let's put those a bit further out. Let's move those up a little bit so G and Z so we can start getting this sort of raised fin shape and we're definitely going to need some supporting loops in here so I'm going to control an R bring that up a little bit control an R bring that up a bit but go into side view to make sure they're relatively in the same place and another one control an R this is going to be the beginning of our fin and control an R there I want a supporting loop to control that so let's start with the modifier then. So let's bring that in and let's put that up a few levels so it's looking a little bit nicer and more round. Again, a bit of a mess at this point, not really a fin, but let's get started with this. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm using Alt and selecting to make these a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna Alt select that. Now with Shift and Alt, Shift and Alt, Shift and Alt. We're gonna to have to change those so it's working around their individual points. So S. And then we're gonna sharpen up these edges. So face mode there, 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 and there, and shift and E. So we're gonna use that mean crease to make those relatively sharp. So let's have a look at what these look like. At the moment I'm working off the mean of each point, so I can press S and Z, and it's gonna scale each one up on the Z axis. And we're gonna need to spread those out because they're getting in each other's way. So let's make again, so we're gonna Alt select that and then just control down to there, control and then control. Let's shrink that a little bit. So I'm gonna press S, bring that down a little bit and then I'm gonna S 
and X to make it a little less wide. So it looks a bit more interesting in terms of shape. And then we need to fix some of this. So I'm gonna go back into face mode and let's rotate that. Going into side view, R, maybe move that a little to the, something like that. And you can see, look how just moving that really alters the shape because it's compared to the other vertices. So straight away, we're getting a more interesting shape. If I do this one, G and Z, you can see straight away how that's elongating it slightly more in certain directions. And again, rotate that. G, maybe rotate it a little bit less. That face, G and Z to move it up. And that face, G and Z to move it up. Actually, maybe not too far, maybe just a little bit. Vertex mode. I want the top to be a little bit more pointed than the bottom. So I'm gonna press S and then X to bring those top points together. And again, affect that really nice and interesting shape that we want for our fin. So I've got a little bit of pinching here. Let's get that face. We can scale that to make that a little bit bigger. Actually, we just want that on the Z axis. So just doing that, we could do the same thing here. And the same thing here. That looks better. In fact, I think this fin here, actually, I think we're gonna rotate so it actually comes down a bit. Alt shift select that. And then G to move it back a little bit. So straight away, we're getting this shape. It's looking quite interesting. I think there's a few points we can add a little bit more curve to these. So for example, I could press Control R, escape, and then move that down a little bit. Add a bit of curve there. I want to scale that up, something like that. Control R here, let's do the same thing, G and Z. So again, it's a bit more curved, let's scale that. Let's have a look at how this looks. So that's looking pretty nice. I think this top one needs to be wider. Control Z so I can see through and I'm selecting everything. It's G and Z, that's put it a little bit high. Oops, nearly forgot to select that. G and Z, a little bit higher. And then let's select those and S and Z to make that a bit wider. How does that look? Let's edge mode there. Let's GG that along. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. And then the same for these. That needs to be scaled a bit up on the Z axis. That needs to be scaled up more on the Z axis. Let's, let's GG that back. So we've got a very quick sort of looking hollow fin here. Let's do something a bit more interesting here. Let's go into edge mode, actually. I'm gonna press Control R, add that in, Control R, add that in, Control R, add one in there and one there, and Control R, add one there and one there. And we can do something a little bit fun with this. So let's go into face mode and I'm gonna delete those two faces, which is gonna cause an error and then I'm just going to select those edges and these edges. Let's have a look how this looks. And edge and bridge edge loops. And we suddenly get this really cool effect here where we've got this hole through the mesh. So let's face mode again. Let's delete those out. And do the same thing up here. And let's edge mode. So alt click, alt click, edge, bridge edge loops, alt click, shift alt click, edge and bridge edge loops. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really fun. So I'm just going to select all those, G and move those on a bit. Let's do something like that. Let's have a look at how that looks. Yeah, pretty cool. I think these bottom ones need to move up. Go with something like that. Let's select those and move those out so we've got a bit more of a sort of rounded shape. Yeah, so again, you can just play around with this. I quite like doing this, just adding in those edge loops, sort of confining things, making things a bit smaller in certain places. But a really, really quick, nice looking sort of hollow fin that you can play with until you're happy. I think that looks very nice for what was very little work. Would something like that look good? Yeah. 
yeah really cool so at this point it's just adding in detail just bringing in something like let's say a quad sphere scale that on the z to make it a little bit elongated shrink that down and we've got something like some gems that could go in the end here Let's scale that right rotate it a little bit let's have a look at where that's placed something like that let's make a copy of that there copy of that there rotate it slightly there's probably about right for that and then shift d and we've got one more rotate that take that and just make sure that they line up okay yep that looks good that's good so yeah really really quick easy hollow fin sub d making this sort of organic shape much much easier so hopefully that gives you some fun ideas to play around with now in our next video i'm actually going to talk about why we don't necessarily need to use sub d there are other options for certain things and people always jump to sub d as being the only option and it is not there are plenty other ways for you to potentially go uh, and things to use and we're going to have a look at some of those in our next video